Greg, who's your number one star for the Patriots in this game? Antonio Gibson. Uh, had only 16 plays, but produced plus plays on seven of them, on seven of them including two explosive plays. The guy... He makes me nervous with the, you know, he's kind of like a whirling dervish in there. But I, you know, I looked it up. He, very low fumble rate in his career. He makes me a little nervous, but uh, he knows what he's doing. Antonio Gibson, I thought he was terrific. He's the best Patriots player on the field. Created things out of nothing. Uh, my one complaint has nothing to do with him. I would like to see them use him as a receiver. If they're going to put Ramondre Stevenson out on the right as a wide receiver and throw to him twice, why not do it with Gibson? Gibson's a better receiver. They should use him a little bit more. Interesting. Okay, both had the same one. Greg from the film room, Maz from his couch. Number two. Uh, Keon White. Uh, one and a half sacks, knocked down, one and a half hurries. He had four of the Patriots' 13 pressures, uh, Thirty, so 30%. Uh, the Patriots only pressured Smith on 27% of his dropbacks. It It's becoming an issue that White is really sort of the only go-to guy in terms of pressure. I went Marcus Jones. I said this yesterday. I thought Marcus Jones played a good game. He's an excellent tackler for a guy his size. His coverage was good. And, uh, you know, on special teams, two returns, 24 yards. Like, he didn't break one or anything. But uh, to me, like, uh, he contributes everywhere. they got to use him on offense. These are two guys that should get the ball to more. Can I ask a quick question about Keon White to Bedard? Yeah. Is he kind of a liability against the run? Uh, a little bit, yeah. When when they, it's sort of similar to uh, Dietrich Wise. Remember, in his early days, they would kick him inside at times and get shoved around. Sometimes they force him to play end. Uh, more and more teams are going to see that on film. They're going to just run right at him because he just he can't hold up. He's not that big. Next third, uh, Ramondre Stevenson. Uh, another terrific game by uh, Ramondre. I mean, that's their offense is their running backs, and uh, he's doing tremendous. I went Hunter Henry. Eight catches, 109 yards, you know, 12 targets. Now, granted, he was about the one guy who was open, but somebody's got to catch it. He did, so he wasn't the problem. Three down, Greg. Vidarian Lowe uh, gave up four and a half pressures, had 10 minus plays. He got worse as the game went on. Probably conditioning is an issue for him because he missed a bunch of time right before the season started. Um, but uh, he and Layden Robinson both had the biggest struggles on the offensive line, but I'm going with Lowe. I went to Wenu. I expect Vidarian Lowe to suck. Yeah, it's it fair. Didn't, it didn't pay Wenu $20 million to suck, and he sucked in this game. Number two. Uh, so I'm going to change a little bit, and I'm going to go to uh, guys that cost the team. Austin Hooper, the field goal. That, I mean, look, we could talk about the sack all you want. That field goal needs to at least be blocked up, and he failed to do it and uh, really adversely affected the Patriots' chances to win that game. And all he had to do was take the inside guy? Yep. And they would have been fine? Probably. Yeah, but that's his job. He's got to take the inside guy. I went Kyle Duggar. That blown coverage was huge. And he's the one that called the defense. So, I, And he admitted after the game it was the wrong call. He put him in the wrong call. He thought that they were, because of the blitz, the throw was going to be short, so they bunched up to the line of scrimmage. Metcalf ran by. And they got smoked. I put that on him. I'm getting to Duggar in a second. So three for me is Marco Wilson and Kyle Duggar. Marco Wilson blows. Oh, Marco horrible. Wilson just handed the Seahawks <laughs> a touchdown by manhandling the receiver for no reason. His PIs aren't even close. No. They're like complete muggings. Or the one to two. He had one in Cincinnati that wasn't debatable. And this one was just, go ahead, a gift. Yeah, I mean, it's just... It, that pass wasn't even going to be close to be completed, and he tackles the guy in the end zone. Ball to one, touchdown. I, don't, I think that was a third down play, if I remember correctly. Like, just horrendous. And on Kyle Duggar, you know, I'm including him on this. Now, he was one of the most impactful guys on the defense. He, In certain ways, he had a really good game. But he had two crucial breakdowns. The, the Metcalf touchdown, he took responsibility for. There are some people who don't believe that, who think it was that Gonzalez should have taken the wide receiver. But looking at it on film, on the other side of the field, they did sort of the same thing, and the outside guy took the deep part of the field. And the inside guy, which would have been Gonzalez, took the flat. It happened on both sides of the field. So if they were supposed to do the same thing on the other side, Duggar should have had uh, the deep part of the field on that. And then also, uh, underlooked, the Charbonnet third and six conversion, the mm -hmm. pass – in overtime, I think it was. In my mind, Kyle Duggar had man coverage, and he just completely forgot about him, 
Nobody was covering him. Yes, Gonzalez should have made the tackle, but that wasn't even his guy. He came off his guy. He didn't even to, try and wrap. Gonzalez didn't try and wrap. Right, him. and to I totally him. blame him for, you know, he's got to do better there. He's got to get him down. But Kyle Duggar, in my opinion, had Charbonnet on that and just neglected to cover him. And there are instances with Kyle Duggar, as good as he is, as physical as he is, every single year we still get this stuff where – you know, even in the Cincinnati game, Gusecki should have had the touchdown. When he knocked out the fumble, he was in man coverage on that guy who was wide open by five yards. And luckily for him, the jack wagon like held the ball out and he punched it out. Great play. But he got burned on those two plays. He got burned for the Metcalf touchdown. He got burned on the Charbonnet. Like, it's not good enough. Like, it's he's got to be better. This team needs him to be better. Okay. He's a, he's a run playing safety is what he is. I had Vidarian Lowe third. Honorable mention fourth down for Greg Bedard, Kyle Duggar. Good stuff. I'm sorry, Maz. Yes, you're sir. Vidarian Lowe. Yeah. yeah, we don't need to dwell on him. Yeah. We all know he blows. <laughs> the the uh, Just quickly, uh, according to Pro Football Focus, of the 127 defensive backs, cornerbacks, corners, corners in the league, Marco Wilson ranked 123rd in coverage his past week. I'd like to know who's worse. Actually, I wouldn't. <laughs> Uh, but those those PIs, and it was, it was third and five. Wow. And they played no chance. He just mugs the guy. Like, you give the ref no option on those plays. On those His his PIs were just way too obvious. If you like that clip, check out more videos from Felger and Mez here. For more Patriots analysis and opinion, hit this playlist. And for all the latest from the Sports Hub, download the app at 98.5thesportshub.com.